This is the ETE-280 single phase power lab. The power lab is not complicated, although there are six individual circuits we will be working with. The primary goal of the experiment is to understand the so-called power triangle involving real power P, reactive power Q, and apparent power S. Besides the various circuits involved in the laboratory, we will use a number of equipment items that are different than you have used before. So let's review them first. All of the measurements will be based on traditional single phase voltages. These voltages are over 50 volts AC, so they should be considered hazardous. The first element is a variac. A variac is a special form of transformer that is adjustable to allow us to adjust the source voltage. The variac has an input power cord, an output power outlet, and it also has a on-off control, a variable voltage control, and a circuit breaker. The circuit breaker is designed to protect equipment, not people. So please do not believe the circuit breaker can protect you from foolish or poor lab practice. When we use the Variac, we normally have the voltage set to zero before we energize the Variac. Along with the Variac, another new piece of equipment is the single phase watt meter. In this lab, we will be using a low-cost kilowatt meter, which can measure voltage, amps, wattage, volt amps, frequency, and power factor. It also includes time functions of kilowatt hours and hours, but we will not be using those last two functions. The final element of the circuit is the load board. The load board consists of power resistors, mounted on a board with terminals. We have 100 and 200 ohm resistors available. In this lab we will only be using the 100 ohm at the beginning and then later we will put two 100 ohm units in parallel for a 50 ohm load. Additionally we will use a power capacitor. This capacitor which is quite large because it can work up to 500 volts DC or 250 volts AC. The capacitors are put in parallel so they are additive when we flip the switches. So 16 and 8 makes 24 microfarads. The final load element is an inductor. This is a power inductor, a toroidal type, the specifications are given on the side, but it is 0.16 Henry, which turns out to be 60 ohms in a 60 hertz system. It has 4 ohms of internal resistance. These elements will be used singularly and then combined into parallel and series circuits for the lab. For the initial test circuit, we simply have a voltage source connected to a 100 ohm resistor. The 100 ohm resistor is connected by using the AC power cord and connecting to each end of the 100 ohm resistor. That cord is plugged into the kilowatt meter which in turn is plugged into the variac. The variac is off in this case and unplugged. You should consult with your instructor at this state before you power on the Variac. Once your circuit has been confirmed, you can plug in your Variac and energize it. We will turn the voltage up to the standard 120 volt reading. We will gently adjust that up to 120 volts and take readings in the circuit. In this case we have voltage being displayed, AC amps, then watts, press one more time for volt amps, frequency, and power factor. Adjust the voltages as described in the handout 
before moving on to the next circuit. When done, turn the voltage to zero, de-energize the variac, and unplug the variac from the wall before doing any wiring changes. For the second circuit, we have replaced the resistor, power resistor, with the capacitor. By the way, the power resistors can get quite warm, so do not leave them energized for extended periods of time. Turn off the variac. In order to make the connection, we will use our resistor board, which would allow, will allow us to connect things very quickly to the capacitor and inductor. On the board, I have left the terminal to the 100 ohm resistor, but on the other end, I have moved it to this terminal. That terminal is a 200 ohm resistor, and as we can tell, there is no connection at this end, so that is simply a floating terminal. Now I can easily take my cables from my capacitor, plug it in to one end of the lead terminal, and then the other end. Now we have completed our circuit with the capacitive load and the source. Again, now you are ready to energize your variac. Once your circuit is set up, you can go ahead and plug in the variac, re-energize it. If you left it close to 120 volts, that voltage will come back up. And then we need to select your capacitance values on your unit. So in this case, we're going to use 16 plus 8 microfarads to make 24 microfarads. Returning to the kilowatt meter, we can read the voltage, the current, the power. Note, notice that the power is nearly zero. The volt amps, which is not zero, the frequency, and the power factor. When completed, de-energize and disconnect your variac. For the final single component load, which is an inductor, we will use the same setup as before, but simply put them in parallel with the capacitor and turn the capacitor off. So in this case, I will disconnect the capacitor by turning the two switches off. I will add the connections from the inductor to the capacitor terminals and now I will have my inductor only in the circuit. So the inductor is connected to the capacitor, but the capacitor is turned off so it is not in the circuit. The wiring on the rest of the board has not changed. Return to the variac, plug it in, and you are ready to go. We have a voltage reading again, a current reading, wattage, Notice the wattage will be much larger than the capacitive setting, volt amps, and frequency and power factor. That is the single R, L, and C load. For the next circuit, we have a capacitance in parallel with a resistance. We will return the circuit to the original resistive case with 100 ohms, and we've moved the terminal back to the other 100 ohms. The capacitor is now in parallel. We can select any capacitance value we desire in the range of this unit. And now move on to the inductor. As before, the inductor is simply put in parallel with the capacitor terminals. The capacitor is now turned off, so it is no longer in the circuit, and the resistor is left as before. We get our voltage reading initially, then amperage, wattage, volt amps, and finally power factor. The final circuit involves a capacitance in parallel with the 50 ohm resistor in series with an inductor. We need to make a couple special modifications for this measurement, so let's take a look at those. In order to make the 50 ohm series resistor with the inductor, we return to the second setup with the terminal on the 100 ohms moved to the uh, second terminal. The 100 ohms and 100 ohms are put in parallel by connecting a wire between the two ends and of course at the other two ends we have 
100 ohm and 100 ohm connection. 100 and 100 put in parallel, parallel makes 50 ohms. Now we can make a connection to the inductor. So you bring your connection from your inductor to one end of the resistor and the other end of the inductor returns to the source. Remember the source is connected to these two terminals. To add the capacitance to the circuit you simply take the terminals from the capacitor Initially, we will start with the capacitor off. That will allow us to do the beginning circuit, which is just resistor and inductor. And then we will uh, make the measurements with the capacitor. There's one other change we must make, though. For a series circuit, we need to measure both the voltage across the 50 ohm resistor and across the inductor. We will do that by using the two voltmeters on the bench. In this case, we'll use this voltmeter, volts connection, make sure you're on AC and volts, and the 200 volt scale. Connect the voltmeter to one end of the 50 ohm resistor and then the other end. Now, we will use this meter as our inductor voltmeter. After making sure you have AC volts selected, 200 volt range, connect that directly to the inductor. So this meter will be reading inductor voltage, this meter will be reading resistor voltage. Go back and energize your circuit, plug in your variac, and we are ready for the measurements. We have voltage again, current, wattage, volt amps, and power factor. So now we have voltage for the resistor, 70 volts, and voltage for the inductor, 89 volts. Notice that the two voltages do not add up to the supply voltage. This is because there is a vector sum between the two. The vector sum of the VR, the resistor voltage, 70 volts, and the inductor voltage, 89, the square root of the sum of those two. Should equal the supply voltage. Now you are ready to make the measurements on the final capacitor circuit. As before, the capacitance is simply added by flipping in switches to the circuit to engage the capacitor. New values of voltage, current, wattage, and volt amps along with power factor will be measured. That is the last measurements for the lab.